Okay, when we look at this piece of oak, we've uh, put uh, three coats of lacquer on here. And um, hopefully the camera will pick this up. Uh, it does look nice when you rake a light on it. Uh, you can see a few undulations in the finish. Uh, a true test is, uh, and I wish we had feel -a vision on here, but when you feel the, it's smooth, but you can feel slight undulations. This may not be the best sample to show because uh, of the porosity of the oak. Uh, we won't be able to, uh, we didn't fill this before we filmed. Uh, but uh, hopefully on film you'll be able to get the gist of the system that I want to show uh, here um, to get the right um, flat finish. Um, we're going to be using um, the ETS 150 slash 3. 3 uh, is the size of the stroke meaning that we're not going to have an aggressive stroke. Um, we're also going to be putting on a super soft pad. We changed it already. Um, the nap on here, uh, combined with the cushion, uh, a little bit softer, will absorb some of the um, energy. Um, with a project, you spend a lot of time building it and then finishing it, staining it, and then laying on uh, uh, lacquer. Um, you spend a lot of time, you don't want to burn through it. The essential thing to remember about this is you want to keep, and what we're going to show you is how to uh, keep this and make it flat, the finish flat, okay? And the other thing I want to point out is right here. We're not going to run this super speed. We're going to take it down to three so we eliminate burning through the finish. Uh, the pad is flat. Um, previously, a lot of people will finish this with your hand, and when you take a piece of paper with your hand, there's undulations in there, there are different pressure points. Here, we can use the sander, and you'll see a little bit of sanding technique on how to do this. And as we step through this, I can show you some other things. Okay, now, when you first look at a finish, um, the paper we're going to be using is granite paper. Uh, we're going to start, um, or you have to judge where you want to start on this. Uh, we're going to be going 1200 we're going to be going 800 1000 1200 it's always good to start high first and if you're spending too much time on that grit back it down and then work back up okay now with this finish i usually start at 800 grit and we're going to put it it's granite paper okay so i'm just going to place it on the sander I'm going to get some power to it with a plug-it cord. Full quarter turn when you put a plug-it cord on. Okay, we'll place this on here. And I always um, like to cover the whole board when I sand. I just don't like to sand here, 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 and here. I want to make sure that the whole surface becomes planar. Okay, I always start with the machine. Sanding technique is essential. You want to go back and forth, to and fro, in six to eight inch circles. That overlapping, that way there you cover the whole surface. What we're looking for is when you look at a spot like this, and hopefully the camera's getting it, um, sometimes you have to even start lower if you're spending a lot of time on 800 grit because you'll see uh, shiny and dull, especially in a flat area right here. Uh, you want to make sure it's all dull. No uh, high, uh, I mean, uh, the low points will be shiny, so you want to make sure it's flat, okay? Uh, this may not be the best specimen, but as you see as I wipe off, that's part of the lacquer. Uh, it's also um, some of the 800 grit still on that board. 
So what you want to do is always, when you remove the paper, set it aside. Okay, and what I like to do is I like to take a little um, release agent here, okay, for the surface. Okay, and remember, it's always good to wipe down between grits. And I'm just taking all that excess 800 grit and lacquer powder off, okay. Unfortunately, we're not going to get everything in the pores. That's where I would blow it out. Um, but you'll see what we're trying to do is just get some nice flat surface. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we'll uh, put on 1000 grit. And we'll do the exact same procedure. Okay? Wiping in between grits. Okay? And as you can see, I don't wanna, as I rake a light across there, I'm getting what I need to get. Okay, always start the machine. I mean, you could start it off, but you have to bring it down flat because that could gouge. I like to start it here, uh, flat on the surface. And then always, 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 when you turn off the machine, bring it off the surface you sand it because if it sits here, you could get swirl marks. <laughs> Once again, I'm going to put that release agent on here. And I'm going to get a fresh paper towel. Paper towel also has a, um, an abrasive uh, quality to it. So what you want to do is when we get up to the higher grits, we'll be switching to microfiber rags. Always use a fresh paper towel to wipe, wipe off in these lower grits. That way there, if I had taken that 800 paper towel I had, it would have still had 800 grit on it. So I just get rid of that. That was uh, 1,000 grit. Let it dry a little bit. Okay, and boy, you're starting to see that haze and flatten. So what I'm going to do now is we'll grab the 1,200. It's dry enough. We'll get it started. Just to recap, it's the ETS 150 slash 3, a super soft pad, granat paper, and the speed is at, set at 3. You will have less like, likely a chance to burn through a finish. Okay? The next step I want to do is I want to take some of that release agent on here and I want to step up to our microfiber rags. Okay? Um, this will be my 1200 grit, this will be my 5000 grit, wipe away, and then here we have an additional one that will be our 8000 grit wipe away. Okay, so I'll just take that and I'll just wipe all that powder out of there if I can get it. Okay, some of those pores on that oak is really deep. I should have filled this piece first, but that's okay. We just want to show how we're going to get it nice and flat and finish this finish. We get all those highs out of there. So right away, like I said, I like to have that fuel of vision. But boy, we got this. It's night and day when I go take my hand and rake it across. This is flat. It's really smooth, much smoother than this. This has a lot of undulations because of the build on that final coat. 
Okay, so we're going to wipe that all off. And then we're going to switch to this machine because I want to polish. It's the Rotex RO150. I want to change the pad. I depress this while it's in Rotex mode and spin it off. And then take this pad, which is our backing pad for our different applicators. Okay, and slip that right on. Tighten it up. So I have it on there. Full turn. And then the first application pad I'm going to use is the sheepskin pad. Uh, this has, and this pad, if you know about polishing, even the pads have abrasive qu uh, qualities to them. Uh, we're going to be using these polishes here. Okay, a two step uh, process where this is a 5000, this is Festool um, MPA machine polishing agent and it's a 5000 grit. Really nice about these polishes is um, they're water based, they're not solvent based. Cleanup's easier and it's easier on the skin if it gets on you, uh, especially if you do a lot of it. And the other one we're going to step to is an 8000 grit. I would never use this 8000 grit with this one because this has a, a, uh, an abrasive quality to it. I would use it with an application sponge. These are my two applicators. Okay, with Festool, we match the right application pad to the right grit range of machine polishing agents. Okay, so I'm going to take these out of the way for now. Okay, on the Rotex, it's just real simple. Okay, I don't need dust extraction, but I'm, I'm going to take the um, dust uh, port. Okay, uh, also right here, speed, uh, slow it down. I don't want to create heat on this finish. Okay, so I'll slow it down. I'll speed it up ever so slightly. All right, and I'll hook up the plug it cord to it. A little's a lot. Remember that. So we'll use the 5,000 speed cut. All right, just a little bit. No need a whole lot. Okay. And what I like to do is get a little on there like this, rub it in so I don't have any material whip. I'll turn it on. Give me one second. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that release agent, spray it on here. I'm going to take the other side of the microfiber rag, the finer side, and wipe that off. Okay, and the only thing we were doing is t with that 5,000 speed cut was taking out the 1,200 grit scratch patterns. Another point I'd like to make is always remember, with Festool, whether it's paper, or an application sponge or a polish. These are the tools. The machines we use move the tools. So selecting the right pad with the machine, the right paper is all essential to the system. So what we're going to do now is now we're going to take a, a finer application pad, the orange. We're going to place it on here like this. We're going to take our final um, machine polishing agent. It's 8,000 grit. Okay, so what the job of this tool and this tool is to take out the scratch patterns of the 5,000. And it's the same technique. Just take a little's a lot with this, just a little bit on there like this. Take it off, put it on here. Make sure I'm set at three. I don't want to cause a lot of heat. Okay, and just start polishing. Let the machine do the work.
do is a little more release agent on here and a final wipe. Oh boy, is that starting to shine. All right, we're just taking that off. Okay. sign is running a hand here and here and oh my goodness it is a huge difference